So who remembers this video? The most incriminating evidence against Hans Niemann. That was the title of it, and this game is proof that we were lied to in that video. Now why do I say that? Well in this game we're going to see one move which swings the evaluation bar by about 40 points and yet this was called a perfect game, matching the engine 100%. So I want to show you this move here but also just appreciate this for the beautiful attacking game that it is over in just 27 moves and this was played in the world under 16 youth championship back in 2019 it's Hans Niemann with black and he's playing against Miguel Angel Soto with white let's see what happened so e4 was played Hans goes for the Sicilian knight f3 knight c6 now we see bishop b5 and this is called the Rossellimo variation so white's developing rapidly, sometimes black goes g6, but we see e6 here, and at times white shatters this pawn structure, again this rapid development thing, takes the centre, castles the king. But here we see the king castling immediately, now the knight comes to e7, defending the other one, and so white goes rook to e1, this time preparing to play differently, so that after a6 you tuck this bishop back away out of the way. Now it looks a bit passive, but it can spring to life later in the game, and it cleared the way for the king to castle. Now we see d5 striking at the centre, and I recently covered a Magnus game, I think it was, where the space was taken with e5, very different struggle, I think that was a Giri Magnus, but here we had takes, different way to play, knight recaptures, striking at the centre now with pawn to d4, and after captures the standard Sicilian capture, the knight hops in, and it's a little bit uncomfortable here for the black player already. So there's a threat to this knight here, the pawns are about to be shattered. If you take here, will you activate the white queen? It's now looking on here, uh, down here, hard to develop this bishop. And so we see this move played, a bishop to d7, covering that c6 knight, preparing to recapture, but now you run into knight to f5. So taking advantage of the pin down the e-file here, you can't capture that one. And it's tough to develop now. You know, if you broke the pin, will you lose a pawn with check? Plus white could pick up that bishop pair. Also now there's a threat to take here on d5 with the queen. So one way to deal with all of this is queen to a5. You cover the knight and prepare to castle queenside. Or you can do what Hans Niemann did, which is queen c7. Now here, you're giving white the knight, which was captured. But the idea is that now you castle queenside and you've broken the pin and you're therefore now attacking two pieces with this one pawn. So after the queen goes, the knight is captured and this is actually now a pawn sacrifice from the black player because we can see this queen is trained on the f7 pawn but white doesn't hastily jump in and capture it straight away. Good move now, bishop f4 is played. As ever in chess, you want to execute your moves in the right order, the most optimal order. And whilst the queen stands on c4, it supports the bishop's development. You pick up a tempo, this one blocked, we see these exchanged, and then the queen recaptures. And the reason that favoured white, well, you've now developed this one, you're one move away from developing the knight somewhere, and then you connect your rooks. So the queen's jumped in, it now gets attacked with knight to e5. And this is really the idea for Hans. So he's a pawn down, he has to generate initiative, and he's going after the white king here. Now, if you capture the pawn on g7, this is just intuitively bad because you're opening the g-file towards your own king, but there's actually an instant killer move here. Do pause and look for it if you want to do so. <coughs> Excuse me. So the move here is knight to f3 check because after that one's captured, you know, you're threatening to win a whole rook. Well, then you come here, you skewer that queen to the king. So no good to take the g pawn. The queen jumped away. Queen h5 was also possible there, by the way, but we'll stick with the game. Both were decent moves. Now knight g4 threatens the mate, and if you block with g3, which didn't happen, well, the thing is, you're weakening all of these light squares, and this h pawn's now got something to nibble on in the future, you're really helping black attack. So instead of blocking with the pawn, we had queen to g3, best move. 
f4 now came, keeping on the initiative. And although the queen is losing time here with this check, you have now blocked out the black queen, so there's no mate threat as things stand. Now the king's in check, the bishop blocks, and now here we see white going wrong, but it's a very difficult position to defend. So they play pawn to h3, kicking this knight. Technically best was bishop to d3. It does look like you're just instantly running into f3, but then there's bishop f5 check, picking up this knight. So you can't go f3 straight away, you know, starting with king b8 or something is better. Game goes on, but it's a difficult defense for the white player. h3 looks natural. But can you imagine what Hans plays here? It's a very common motif in these kind of attacking setups. So this is where he chucks the h-pawn down the board, giving an entire piece. And it's completely sound. White didn't capture the knight, but if they had done so, after the pawn recaptures, the point here is that you're ripping open this h-file, you're gonna checkmate that king. And with the pawn structure, if you ever do this, you do this. If you do this, well, for one thing, you open up the bishop, but you know you could also do this. Maybe there are other good moves in this particular pawn push, g3, I haven't analyzed, but that's the idea. You can always box in that king if white ever pushes the pawns. So after g captures, you're coming to the h file, white would have to try and defend like this. Uh, you can capture the queen or you can slide away. And although white can force these queens off the board, the problem is the rooks just finished the job. This is just a sample line of how the game could end. So that's the problem with ripping open this h file. So we didn't have the knight captured. Instead in this position here, where are we? Pawn h3, h5. Now we had this knight coming to a3. And this is just a complete blunder, really bad move. White had to actually try f3 there, just shutting out the bishop and so on. Now you give up the e3 square. This is why it's very, very ugly but then knight a3 is just about okay, still better for black, but now you can come to c4, challenge this piece. This was the way to go. But after knight a3, well now hands, he pushes on with this f3 push, and the whole king position is getting ripped to shreds. So we see captures on g4 now, because by the, whoops, g4, because by the way, the queen is now threatening to mate the king, you know, this is the problem. And in a, if g3, I never actually analyzed this earlier, okay, there's literally a mate in two. You can capture, pawn recaptures, and then this is checkmate. Wow, look at that, that's stunning. I never even analyzed that till just this moment. Okay, so these are the problems. So f3 played, that's why the knight's captured, now the pawn captures, you're threatening mate once again. So this time the queen blocks, but we've seen this motif, right? But this is the moment that I'm talking about proof. So the number one engine move gives a minus 54.2 advantage, you know, insanely good for black. And it's to play the move queen to h6. Hands, however, chops here. It's about the third move down, gives it a double uh, question mark because you're really not playing the best stuff. And I know this video has already been shown to be not the most accurate data and so on, but this is just one more example, this game where Hans was clearly not cheating. These are just completely human moves. And it's really shameful, I think, the video that Gambit Man and Yosha put out, just discrediting him on a complete load of crap data, in my opinion. Anyway, that's my rant. So Hans takes on e5, the rook recaptures. Now he goes rook h6. So he's preparing to double, mate the king, and you just can't do anything. So we see the pawn capturing, the bishop recaptured, mate is threatened with the rook. So this bishop blocks. Now the other rook doubles. And what to do here? I mean, you're just completely boxed in. So white chucks the rook. I mean, it's the best move just to stave off the mate for a moment, then run with the king. But now when this rook comes down, you're threatening to win a whole piece. And this is where we see a resignation in 27 moves. Why the resignation? Well, okay, you're threatening to win a piece. So if you capture that one, pawn recaptures, you're completely boxed in. Checkmate is coming, so this is the only way to stop it. But then we double again, and again, you just can't stop the mate being delivered here. This is a sample finish. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you want to see another fascinating Hans Niemann game, then check out the video on screen. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.